And welcome back to Who Would Win. Today's Who Would Win comes to us from Quentin Blake, who asked the question, Who Would Win in a Fight? White Lantern Kyle Rayner versus Sephiroth. This, normally I probably would have looked at this and said, this has got to go straight to the uh, speed round video. But you've been asking for this one for a while, so I figured I'd at least <laughs> be nice and give it its own video. Kyle Rayner is one of the many, well, former Green Lanterns, one of the former, one of the many Green Lanterns who come from Earth. We have uh, John Stewart, we have, as the uh, classic one. We have, sorry, we have uh, John Stewart's the second one. Uh, we have Hal Jordan as the first one. John Stewart's also the, another big fan favorite. He's the one that we get in Justice League, uh, the TV series. We have Kyle Rayner. You also have Guy Gardner, and I believe there's two, and I'm not, I, they're relatively recent in terms of comic history, two uh, women uh, who I don't remember their names, but there we've had like multiple Green Lanterns from Earth, but Kyle Rayner, during the War of Light, was given the honor ultimately to become the a White Lantern, and today, to date, I believe he is the only White Lantern in DC. Uh, let's, one second here, White Lantern Corps. Because for a while there was a couple of them. Uh, Swamp Thing was a uh, was a White Lantern for a while, uh, but he's now no longer a White Lantern. Who is the who are the current members of the uh, former members? Current members. Uh, oh, is Kyle actually no longer a member? Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, Kyle Rayner's no longer a member. So okay, so the current members. Of the, there are actually are about one to see. There's about five current White Lanterns, all of whom are characters that I am not familiar with based on their name. Uh, White Lantern, Mission Extra Earth Prime. I do not know who that is. There is also someone called Raw Game Shay, Say Saran, Talion, and Tessa. Talos Earth, Earth or Earth, Earth Sir. Uh, okay, so yeah, he's okay. He's clearly a White Lantern, um, just based on the image I'm finding. I don't know who any of these are. I'm. When did uh, when Kyle stop being a White Lantern? That's a, okay. So this uh, the one of these guys, Talahi, Talahi, is apparently a crystalline alien of some kind. He's not humanoid at all. At all, um, so apparently, uh, he, so apparently, what happened was he, um, Kyle Rayner made more White Lantern rings, is what happened, and ultimately, uh, sorry, well, she was a member of the White Lantern. Why are you saying she's still currently one? Um, apparently, that's what. So yeah, he made more White Lantern rings, and they went out to find people. But, so he actually currently is not a uh, White Lantern from everything I can find here. He's I think when I think he was given back his original power ring. Um, so I'm again I'm just double checking real quick here. Uh, let's see here, Kyle Rayner, White Lantern. Uh, return. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he's back as a Green Lantern right now. Okay. Cool. Um, I, I I honestly didn't know that. But anyway, we're talking about White Lantern and Kyle Rayner. I've now diddly dallied up on that. The point of talking about the White Lanterns is the White Lanterns are the de facto strongest Lantern Corps there is. There is no other Lantern Corps stronger than the White Lantern Corps. Uh, now, this is due to the fact... Now, you may make an argument, what about the Gold Lanterns? Well, we don't know enough about those guys. Uh, what about the Ultraviolets? No, they're not stronger than the White Lanterns. What about the Black Lantern Ring? Nope, because the White is the opposite of that. The White Lantern Ring is the la the White Lantern Ring Corps or White Lantern Corps is Lantern Corps of life. He's Lantern Corps of protecting and creating and nurturing and guarding life. And as such, uh, it's it can only be wielded of, of by people who a know the value of life, b try to live life as much as they can and nurture and foster it and protect it and so forth. This is why Swamp Thing was a White Lantern for a while because he's the embodiment of the green. Uh, but the more important thing is the White Lantern Ring is de facto the strongest lantern because it is a combination of all the other lantern ring rings in one. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and so, and so, oh no, oh, wait a minute, members, mastered all seven colors of the emotion and creating a white land. Uh, it's just, it's, apparently Cal Rain is still considered a member though, which is odd. Anyway, um, basically you had to basically master all seven, um, uh, colors of the emotional spectrum, will, fear, love, rage, um, compassion, uh, um, I'm blanking on two here, compassion, hope, avarice. You had to master them all. Uh, and then by um, and then by combining them together, you create, create the white light on the electromagnetic spectrum because putting all the colors together in the light spectrum makes white. Uh, now, what does a white lantern ring do? Well, the correct answer to that is yes. <laughs> They're really the light color, emotional spectrum dominance. In the the white light is the first light, and in essence, all the other colors and emotional spectrum combined. As such, a user of the white ring can generate any color of the emotional spectrum and use the power of each color ring. The white ring also allows the user to access the rings of any member of any of the other lantern corps and observed members. Has the standard array of lantern abilities, though energy blasts, force fields, energy constructs, phasing, uh, environmental playback, invisibility, energy absorption, flight, wormhole, and spatial manipulation, healing, connection to life. Uh, which you know, uses the energy uh, energy of life, and so it's connected to all life. The ring is allowed to use allows the user to see the footprints of life, see the past, present conditions of all life in a limited area where around the user, and even see the souls and essence of those who have recently died. However, the bearers of the white ring become a loyal servant of the life entity. They are they have a limited amount of free will because there is a stipulation to being a white lantern. You're not allowed to kill. Let me rephrase that. It's less that you're not allowed to kill and more that it's very, very, very discouraged. If you can find any other way to take your opponent down, you do it. Um, but because it can access every single power from every lantern ring, apart from a death lantern, ultraviolet, and gold, uh, that it is, and it's all amped by the conduit of life, which is the most powerful of the light sources, it is de facto the most powerful lantern ring there is. The, now, Sephiroth is a being who is connected to, oh crap, is it the Genosa? Geno, de, Genosha? I believe it is. Genosha? Uh, it's Sephiroth. What's it? Oh god. Uh, Sephiroth. So, go away. Let's try again. Uh, will you, okay, we're gonna, why are you just, fine, we'll go that one. Wait, I don't know why you're giving me this weird run around here. Um, but yeah, Sephiroth, he's connected to Genosha. He was a super soldier uh, designed to be a su super soldier. But ultimately, he lost. He, he at one point fell into Genosha. I believe it's Genosha itself, right? He fell into the life, life stream. Is that what it's called? I'm not a big Final Fantasy player. So these terminologies I do, I have trouble with sometimes. I believe it's the life stream he fell into uh, and basically merged with it. Uh, Genova, that's what, not Genosha, Genova, Genova, my apologies to the Final Fantasy players, that's a Genova, um, Genosha is, uh, the mutant savior world, Boy, being, he basically became imbued with, uh, with the life, uh, the energy of the life stream, as such, he's already a, first of all, a physically imposing individual, but he was already a master warrior, master swordsman with his giant Muramasa, which he could wield normally with one hand, which is very, unusual for something that big and unwieldy, usually. Uh, because of his connection to uh, Gen uh, Genova, he is has mass regeneration. He can pretty much recover from nearly any wound because he's just, his soul is now in life where it's connected this large entity of life. Uh, he, obviously, he can fly. He doesn't really need the wing to do it, but he does it because it looks cool. I uh, can use, um, I believe it's, yeah, Materia. Uh, he can get, he can use things like black materia, which causes meteor. His famous ability, supernova, uh, allegedly teleports people to another dimension where supernova is happening, or time and space where supernova is happening, and such. As such, he is capable of wiping individuals from the face of existence, pretty much. Uh, he's capable of using other materia, creating doppelgangers, controlling minds. He is. By all accounts, extremely par uh, uh, powerful. Even if his physical body is destroyed, his will will persist. Persist. 
After overpowering Genova's will, he gained the ability to restrict its influence through her cells, able to construct avatars in his likeness. Kind of a dark side situation, nowhere near as powerful as dark side, but kind of a dark side situation where uh, dark side, the dark side you see is just an avatar. He's just a construct made by the dark side to interact with the, the world uh, because the real dark side would destroy the world just by existing. Um, uh, he is, uh, being immersed in life, he has granted him psychic powers, allowing him to read others' minds, making him adept in emotional manipulation and preying on others' dark emotions. He can communicate through others with telepathy. He has, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, he can warp reality as he slices a dark tornado caused by the Whisperers to create an entrance to his singularity. He takes himself and Cloud to the edge of creation in a flash of light. How much of the surreal experience Cloud goes through, though, in the battle against Sephiroth are illusions, uh, I know, is left to be, is ambiguous, really. That being said, it's clear he can rewarp some level of reality. So, why would I have no, based on how powerful this is, you would think, well, yeah, Genova is a, a pure life stream of life and energy and power. So, this should be a no-brainer. This should be a lot closer, right? Well, not really. See, while it's frowned upon, a, a White Lantern can still destroy something. That being said, destroying something or killing something may cost them their Lantern Ring overall, but they can still do it. The problem right out the gate is Kyle Rayner, if he really had to, could just blow up the planet and be done with it, and Sephiroth's got nothing to... He has nothing against that. He's got absolutely nothing. Genova would be gone. He has little to survive on. He would eventually just suffocate in that space after a good amount of time. Or he'd be thrown into a star or something like that. Add on the fact that while Sephiroth has telekinetic abilities, the Lantern Ring protects you from mind manipulation abilities. So that's out of the question. Psychic abilities aren't going to work on Kyle, so he's going to have to go into actual combat. This leads to the next problem. While Sephiroth is very fast and powerful, Lanterns are generally light speed uh, in terms of flight capability anyway, because they have to travel the universe. Also being able to create wormholes, warp space on its own means any sort of spatial kind of reality warping Sephiroth can do, Kyle can kind of do that on a much greater scale, as he's capable of fundamentally altering kind of creation in many ways. Not like the true creation of uh, the universe, but he is capable of... Um, he's capable of... He could literally rewind the clock on a planet if he wanted to. Uh... Add on the fact that no attack Sephiroth has, say for maybe Supernova, would really be able to do much to Kyle. Lanterns generally have a unconscious shield barrier around their bodies, so most of his attacks are just going to crack off of them. The Supernova, what in theory would be de uh, could be devastating, but again, White Lantern Ring stopping the death of thousands of baby uh, in like this Supernova. Lanterns can stop Supernovas. I mean, you look at just what Green Lanterns have done. Hal and um, and Kilowog and even Kyle Rayner before. You've seen what the, they can do. Power through, like, severe maths, survive, like, continuities being uh, erased. Um, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with superpower beings like Superman. Uh, among our, you know, rewind a star, really. Blue Lanterns have done that. Uh, so, cotton, being that White Lanterns are the most powerful... Nothing that's nothing that Sephiroth could throw at him would phase him. The only catch in this fight is Kyle would be bound to try to not kill him if he could. Uh, unless it's an accident, in which case, whoopsie. But he'd be doing everything he could not to kill him. Most likely what would happen is he would entrap him in something. Because the life stream is just powering the White Lantern Ring further. Though, whereas the White Lantern Ring and the White Lantern Core does not power the life stream. It's its own separate thing. So, Kyle, most likely after a lot of failed attempts on Sephiroth, would probably just cage him and take him somewhere that he would not be a threat to anyone. Period. Sephiroth is, simply put, not the same level of threat as a White Lantern. In fact, I, he's not really the same level of threat as any Lantern. Um, even Blue Lanterns, though they are the weakest Lantern Corps when they're not amped, are actually among the strongest Lanterns. So, when they're at full power. Uh, but Sephiroth, Sephiroth is a dangerous individual, to be sure. His supernova, theoretically, can annihilate solar systems. because That's a one-trick pony attack. Like, he's not going to be able to get a secondary uh, shot off with it if he can help. And even if he does, Kyle's just going to be like, nope, and I'm back here. So, that's not going to work. Uh, besides the supernova, power-wise, he... 
He doesn't even really have the power to destroy a planet. Threaten the world, sure. There's a difference between threatening a world and being able to destroy a world, though. One nuke is a threat to the world, but one nuke cannot destroy the world. Kind of the same principle here. Sephiroth is a world-level threat. He's just not a world-destroying threat most of the time. If you were to somehow summon Supernova and just, say, summon it where the planet is, and then just evaporate the planet, well, then that would that would definitely be a planetary-level threat. And that's the only technique he has that makes him a, a, a planetary-level threat. But Kyle Rayner, in his sleep as a White Lantern, is a planetary-level threat. Um, just by being a White Lantern, he is a planetary-level threat at minimum. Minimum. More than likely, they're more... Uh, lanterns, just at minimum, are planetary-level threats. More like solar system-level threats and even beyond, to, depending on what lantern you're dealing with, how strong they are with their particular ring. Kyle A is, uh, is just more imaginative. Because all the lantern constructs are derived from your will... He has way more in his arsenal than Sephiroth is ever going to have, unfortunately for Sephiroth. And unlike Sephir unlike Kyle, Sephiroth eventually can run out of energy to some degree. He doesn't have a limitless pool, whereas because of what the White Lantern is, Kyle does. So ultimately, yeah, Kyle would probably stomp Sephiroth, um, unfortunately for Sephiroth. But it, I can see why in concept this fight would be chosen. Bolt White, uh, the White Lantern of Life versus the Life Stream from uh, Genova. I I can understand why it'd be chosen. Still, though, my money would be on Kyle Rayner every day, all day. If I, if Death Valve were to somehow do this, and I don't think they would, uh, I would definitely put my money down on that one. So that's my thoughts, though. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.